That's right, every single Mario Kart track. Well, except for the retro ones. We're saving those for the next video slash the one in the card right now. This list will be based on how much fun the tracks are, their creativity, and overall replayability and flow. We also won't include Mario Kart Tour or Mario Kart Arcade tracks as they're just spin-offs. So let's take on this colossal undertaking and get her ranked. 145, Vanilla Lake 2. We're starting with tracks that are straight up unfun. The ice is super slippery, there's water everywhere, and the ice blocks are aggravating to avoid. 144, Vanilla Lake 1. This is basically the same as Lake 2, although this time there aren't as many ice blocks, which makes the track slightly less obnoxious. 143, Figure 8 Circuit. It's a beginner track, so its simplicity makes sense, but when we're comparing every Mario Kart track with one another, Figure 8 Circuit is extremely generic with long straightaways offering nothing of value. 142, SNES Bowser's Castle 2. It's your typical SNES Bowser castle, but one part of this track is dumbfounding. There's a turn that leads to a dead end, and you can even fall into the lava. What purpose does this serve? To lay epic troll us? Well, congrats, you got us, wow. You've, you've earned, like, worst track ever, Nintendo. Good job. 141, Yoshi Falls. The big Yoshi egg in the middle is kind of cool, but you can't really see it when playing. You move around in an oval with a few boosts and waterfall paths. That's it. 140, GameCube Sherbet Land. I don't necessarily hate ice levels. Sometimes they can be a lot of fun. But the degree of slipperiness in GameCube Sherbet Land is borderline unplayable. And look, I'm a guy that likes Double Dash's touchy controls, but avoiding the freezies at the end is a goddamn event when it shouldn't be. 139, Mario Circuit 1, the very first Mario Kart track. It's a classic, but it's also the most basic and bland. Memorable and lame sums it up. 138, Peach Circuit. Besides the massive castle in the background, that's about all you get for variety. Do a few turns here and there, and bada bam, bada bing. 137, GBA Mario Circuit. It's similar to SNES Mario Circuit, but with a bit more pizzazz in the graphics. But boiling it down, it's basically the same thing. 136, Koopa Beach 2. Onto our first beach theme track, you go around an extremely tiny circle driving on sand and thin water. There's some cheap cheeps to avoid as well as water holes, but the track design is extremely bare bones. 135, Koopa Beach 1. Virtually the same thing as Beach 2, but the level is more varied. There's some jump ramps and a split path. Yep, super varied, super epic. Yep, mm-hmm. 134, Mario Circuit 3. That's right, there's a lot of Mario Circuit tracks without many differences. This one has a tricky turn about halfway through and some pipes and a booster. 133, Mario Circuit 4. It's like Circuit 3, but with much better flow. Lots of tight turns are abound, and it's generally more fun to drive through. 132, Mario Circuit 2. There's one reason I'm putting Mario Circuit at the top, and that's because at the end there's a sick jump that sends you flying in the air. Yeah, I know, I'm really stretching here. 131, N64 Sherbet Land. There's a bit of fun to be had with this Sherbet Land. For one, it's not nearly as slippery as the GameCube version, and two, there's a cave to drive through. With that said, the penguins can be really obnoxious, and there's tons of them to avoid. 130, SNES Rainbow Road. After you play all of Super Mario Kart, a track like this is a breath of fresh air in the visual department, but that doesn't really make it fun to play. The track is so narrow and the turns are so sharp. Falling feels like you actually died since it takes so long to get back up. 129, GBA Rainbow Road. Imagine SNES Rainbow Road, but a lot prettier, and the edges let you jump. The jumps can save you from falling and also pulling off shortcuts. 128, Donut Plains 1. I don't see donuts anywhere. I'm disappointed. You're driving through planes, and the only interesting part is this bridge you go over with some water, because that's super cool. Oh, wow, look at that bridge. 127, Choco Island 1. Apparently, it's island, but chocolate. The background looks pretty cool, and there's some ramps and stuff, but it's mostly just a Mario Circuit track with a new coat of paint. 126, Choco Island 2. The same can be said here, but the track is a little more lively considering we drive through a massive pile of mud. Or, I guess, chocolate syrup? Who knows? 125, Donut Plains 2. It's Plains 1 with a new fun feature, Monty Moles. They pop up and you have to avoid them or get hit trying. 124, Snowland. I love the music and the massive glaciers in the background, but it's not the greatest track. There's some water holes and snowman, which is nice, but the issue is the damn shaking. Your screen shakes the whole time, and it's really off-putting. 123, Ghost Valley 2. For one of the first ghost tracks, it captures the atmosphere pretty well. There's ghosts in the background, and the road is a rickety bridge with broken planks and guardrails missing. 
122, Ghost Valley 1. As you'd expect, the visuals are the same, but the track layout is a little more fun to drive around. 121, Ghost Valley 3. It's the other Ghost Valleys, but it's much broader in design and overall has better track design. Cool. 120, GBA Bowser Castle 1. The music slaps in the background is pretty appealing, but the track design is super boring. There's nothing wrong with simplicity necessarily, but this is a track that fades from memory right after playing. 119, SNES Bowser's Castle 1. Smooth curves are banned in Bowser Castle 1. Every turn is 90 degrees and there's also some ramps to fly off. 118, SNES Bowser's Castle 3. Same looking level, more jumps and options to make. Therefore, it's slightly better. 117, GBA Bowser Castle 2. Are you getting confused at which track is what at this point? Because I certainly am. You've got some split paths, you drive over gates, and the background is a creepy Bowser statue. 116, GBA Bowser Castle 3. I love the purple palette on the track, and the level design is a lot of fun compared to the eight bajillion gajillion other gazillion bajillion other Bowser castles. 115, Donut Plains 3. You've got bridges that you're forced to jump over, money moles, sharp turns, and random dirt that slows you down. It's got a little bit of everything, and it makes for one of the best Super Mario Kart tracks. 114, Bowser Castle 4. It seems like this castle is held in a nuclear power plant, which is kind of nuts if true. The track is also extremely varied, and this is by far the best GBA Bowser Castle. 113, GBA Luigi Circuit. Luigi, but he's big sad and caused a rainstorm. The rain effect is pretty decent for Game Boy standards, and the track adds to the immersion with puddles that you can trip over. 112, Mario Raceway. Mario's narcissism carries over to the 3D Mario Karts. This one has a bunch of Mario banners and signs. The environment is grassy with some sandy areas, but that's all that really stands out. 111, DS Mario Circuit. Fairly similar to Mario Raceway, but with a lot more variety. This includes some Goombas vibing on the road, and a beautifully drawn Peach's Castle in the back. 110, Luigi Raceway. The only track where one of the item boxes always gets you a blue shell, although collecting it is fairly difficult. You also drive through a tunnel, which is pretty lit. Pun fully intended. 109, Wii Luigi Circuit. This is reminiscent of Mario Raceway due to the Luigi fanfare. The boost ramps at the end are a nice touch, and the ramp in the sand is good for the folks with mushies. 108, Mario Kart Stadium. We finally reached the Mario Kart 8 track, and this really doesn't do a great job showing off the anti-gravity gimmick. It's a fun track with a couple split paths and glide jumps, but it's pretty standard like the other Mario circuits. 107, GameCube Luigi Circuit. The classic starter course for Double Dash. The music is super chirpy and really gets you in the mood for racing. The track itself is minimal in design, but the overall vibe it gives off is great. 106, Toad Circuit. There's really not much to add besides big toad balloons. I mean, for real, those are some large, large balloons. At least the gliding ramp adds some spice and everything nice. 105, Wii U Mario Circuit. Twisty is the name of the game. The track is essentially a glorified figure eight, but it flips upside down, which adds a lot more flair than you'd expect. The straightaway parts have stacked Goombas and Rams, which is kind of nice. 104, GameCube Mario Circuit. We're on the 80th Mario Circuit. What's different now, huh? Well, I'll tell ya. There's a big chain chomp at the beginning for added difficulty, and the road gets bumpy at the end. 103, Wii Mario Circuit. Peach's castle in this version is massive, and the world is framed more like a fancy town. You also get a big chain chomp who's a good boy, and he's my favorite doggy. Aw, chain chomp. 102, Royal Raceway. We're almost through all the generic Mario tracks. At least this one has an enormous jump at the end. There's something really gratifying about taking off on the ramp and flying through the air for five seconds. It's almost like you're skydiving. 101, 3DS Mario Circuit. For years, I've wanted a track where you drive through Peach's Castle and enter levels in Mario 64, and this circuit kind of does that. You drive through grassy plains, but also through a portion of Peach's Castle, which is really cool. 100, Daisy Circuit. For all the Daisy fans out there, she finally has her moment to shine. Well, with Luigi, that is, considering there's a massive statue of them dancing. There's not much else to say besides that this track has some cool shortcuts, and the orange palette has a transcendent feeling of romanticism. 99, Riverside Park. Pulling off a lush jungle for the GBA is crazy, even to this day. In the park, you'll take some boosted ramps and basically drive through a jungle. 98, Lakeside Park. It's fairly similar to Riverside, but manages to be even more immersive. There's a volcano going off in the background. Lava rocks fall from the sky and land on the tracks. Lakeside Park desperately needs a remake from a new Mario Kart game. 
97, Broken Tear, or Ghost Valley on steroids. It's a ghost level that has actual booze on the road, and the background has this monster mountain thingy that radiates heat. 96, Boo Lake. Boo hoo if you like Broken Pier more, I find the dead trees and mansion much more appealing. And the track design is straight up better and radder, so there's that. 95, Shy Guy Beach. We've got a bunch of crabs running around the sand and a pirate ship that shoots cannonballs. Any guys that are shy wouldn't like this one, probably. 94, Yoshi Desert. You can't really go wrong with a Yoshi Sphinx just hanging out in the background. The track is pretty fun too, and even as a small oasis amidst all the desert. 93, Cheap Cheap Beach. We've got a hybrid of a beach, beach houses, jungle, and even a boat port. The transitioning from each area is done really well. 92, Cheese Land. I'm not sure how one comes up with the idea of making a track around cheese, but we'll roll with it. Realistically, it's probably so they could reuse their desert assets to save space on the cartridge, but we've got mice running around, so I'm not complaining. It's really innovative, it's really cool. 91, Desert Hills. The name speaks for itself. You're in a desert, and there are definitely some hills. The Angry Sun makes an appearance, which is cool, and you'll also have to watch for hotheads at certain points. 90, Dry Dry Desert. Another desert level, but it's got some fun quirks, like falling down a pit of quicksand gets you eaten by a massive piranha plant, and there's a huge tornado you gotta watch out for, or it'll throw you into the air and you die. Well, okay, you don't die, but you know. 89, Koopa Troopa Beach. The music screams vacation, and that fits the theme quite nicely since we're at a beach. There's a couple of ramps to take. Some of them let you take a massive shortcut or jump over a huge boulder. I don't know why you'd do that since it's not really faster, but the option is there. 88, Cheap Cheap Island. To this day, this is probably the prettiest beach-themed Mario Kart level. I don't know how, but Nintendo is just really good at making sunsets, and this one is no different. There's also a good amount of variety as you constantly go back and forth from ports to the beach. 87, Cheap Cheap Lagoon. The older beach levels didn't handle water well, so it's nice that Mario Kart 7 lets you cruise underwater and explore what's underneath. There's clams with boxes, a pretty looking cavern, and it all wraps together quite nicely. 86, Banshee Boardwalk. I don't know if I'd really call this a ghost theme level, it's mostly just dark outside. The house is a cool touch since there's a lot of bats to avoid, and the atmosphere is quite chilling. 85, Ribbon Road. Like Cheeseland, the idea of making ribbons into a track is so foreign, but also so interesting. Ribbon Road not only looks cool, but is also pretty tricky with tons of sharp turns and plenty of speed boost to hit. 84, Sunset Wilds. This is a canyon-based level, and after each lap, it gets a bit darker outside. This track is surprisingly in-depth, with Shy Guy tends to avoid, a few speed boosts here and there, and basically everything Super Circuit has to offer. 83, Sky Garden. One of the few 2D tracks that manages to hold up with the 3D ones. Sky Garden looks mystical with the stone-like ground, but there's also various shortcuts across clouds if you jump carefully enough. 82, Moo Moo Farm. I've never lived on a farm, but I imagine it would feel a lot like driving on Moo Moo Farm. You got a bunch of money moles in the road, some cows out in the distance, and a very southern music piece going along. 81, Moo Moo Meadows. For years, I've argued that Moo Moo Farm is better than Meadows, but objectively, this one has better track design. There's ramps you can jump off of, the moles move through the ground now, and even the cows get on the road for some action. 80, Excite Bike Arena. Remember when Nintendo made Excite Bike games? Remember when they used to use most of their IPs and now it's just like the same five? Anyway, this level is pretty basic since it replicates the Excite Bike design. But what's really neat about it is the ramps and mud piles randomly change every time you race. 79, N64 Rainbow Road. By far my most nostalgic Mario Kart track. The music alone makes me tear up from the good times as a kid, but as a track, it's not super fabulous. It's by far the longest Mario Kart track ever, and the only thing that happens is Chain Chomp's bypass every once in a while. 78, Peach Beach. Never has a beach track looked so extravagant and different. I kind of feel like I'm in Hawaii or something. The most notable part of Peach Beach is the Cataquacks, which can flip you high in the air. They offer a nice balance of challenge since the water also slows you down. 77, Daisy Hills. This is one of those beginner tracks that tries to do a lot to stand out. Firstly, there's goats that walk around, and goats are cool. Then you've got hot air balloons that you can bounce off, and an entire town to drive through. 76, Bone Dry Dunes. Is this considered a Dry Bones track? I mean, I guess it is to some extent, and that's pretty dope since he's the best character. Bone Dry Dunes has a few split paths which add variety, and I even love how the piranha plants are all bones to fit with the theme. 
75 Choco Mountain because Choco Island can finally have the 3D hills it always wanted. There's not much to this track to be honest besides some Choco boulders that fall near the end. This is a very bumpy and wavy ride and the music really makes this all the more special. 74 Rosalina's Ice World Is it just me or is this track named super corny? As you'd expect, you're driving along ice that surprisingly isn't obnoxiously slippery, and I also love how you dip into the icy waters and end up in a glacier cave. It's quite the spectacle, but I just can't get behind how lame that name is. Rosalina's Ice World Oh wow, really that's the best you could have thought of? So cool! 73 Ice Ice Outpost I've heard a lot of people say this is bad and dumb. It's really average, but I wouldn't call it horrible by any means. I actually really like the idea that the entire road is always split into two, forcing you to pick between which one to use and how to optimize your speed and drifts. Admittedly, the theme is kind of boring, but the level design is awesome. 72, Baby Park. You would think this would be lame since you drive in an oval over and over again, but the items in Double Dash make all the difference, especially the Bowser shell. They add this layer of chaos that isn't seen in most Mario Kart titles, and it's way more fun than you would think. Adding seven laps is a nice bonus too. The laps going by faster adds to the overall zaniness. 71, Calamari Desert. By far one of the best desert levels, because it manages to blend a sense of feeling lost and isolated with its long desolate path at the end, but also as an old fashioned train to help keep things interesting. And the music fits perfectly as well. It's one of the most relaxing yet motivating pieces. 70, Frappe Snowland. What I really love about this track is the backdrop. It's very clearly dawn or nighttime. This brings back those warm and fuzzy Christmas Eve vibes when I was a kid. Beyond on those feels, the track is varied with a snowman bomb section and some sort of glacier at the end. 69, Yoshi Circuit. One of the most recreated Mario Kart tracks. The original still holds up as the best one. That's simply because it has both of the shortcuts and it just looks really cool. And as I'm sure you know, the track is an outline of Yoshi and magically it works. 68, DK's Jungle Parkway. Harkening back to the days when Donkey Kong 64 was a game people actually cared about. This track has a massive jump and there's an interesting mechanic where you get hit by coconuts if you veer off the main course. After that is an extremely narrow bridge and a massive cave to go through. There's a lot happening in this jungle. 67 and 64 Wario Stadium. As the first stadium themed track, Wario Stadium doesn't hold up especially well, but it's still a great time with an endless amount of ramps. And of course you've got Wario's face plastered all over the walls, because who wouldn't want that? 66, Shy Guy Bazaar. I never thought we would get an Arabian Night theme for a track, but it's quite the welcome addition. The course is similar to Subcon, which is a reference to Super Mario Bros. 2 of all things. 65, Dry Dry Ruins. Mario Kart Wii really had a way of expanding on the typical themes and going crazy with them. This desert track is extremely hilly and also has us going into a pyramid with rising sand after each lap. It's really cool how even the pillars fall as the laps go by. 64, DS Wario Stadium. This is basically Wario Stadium 2. It's very similar to the N64 version, but much more fleshed out. The ramps sometimes have fire rings to jump through, you slide through mud via tons of speed boosts, and the track layout is just more interesting. 63, Animal Crossing. Most tracks tend to look exactly the same every time they're played, which yeah, that's to be expected, but Animal Crossing breaks the norm and randomly selects different seasons, which changes the track's look completely. It's a really awesome gimmick that should be utilized more often in the future. 62, Toad's Turnpike. The emphasis on our small cards is brought to a different level since you drive through actual traffic. The cars and trucks are extremely deadly and have wonky hitboxes, and that's what makes this track so awesome. You feel a lot of pressure to avoid getting hit by anything. 61, Water Park. A theme park track on its own would have been a great idea, but the flood half of it is something I wouldn't have expected. Water Park is one of the few water levels I actually enjoy since going there doesn't feel sluggish, and you can even boost off the coasters. 60, Shroom Ridge. I imagine some prefer Toad's Turnpike over this one, but I've always found Shroom Ridge to be underrated. This track feels like I'm on a family road trip, going through some mountains, playing Pokemon on a Game Boy for several hours at a time. I'm not sure if that's what they were going for, but it works well. 59, Neo Bowser City. Finally, Bowser upgraded from castles to a utopian city. Okay, maybe that's, maybe that's a bad thing. But there's a constant downpour, and it looks really sick with all the buildings lit up in the night sky. There's also plenty of puddles that you can spin out from. 58, DS Bowser's Castle. Admittedly, the visuals are nothing special, but the track design is innovative in a lot of ways. You've got the main room where the floor rotates against you, and this tube thingy that spins depending on your center of gravity. It's nice to be able to go inside and outside the castle. 
57, Wild Woods. Huh, I only just figured out that this track is similar to Maple Treeway, where shrunk down, drive across tree branches, and zoom through rushing water. On top of that is a Shy Guy Village, which is very easy to miss due to how much happens on the road. 56, N64 Bowser's Castle. One of the most classic Bowser castles of them all. The thwomps are absolutely ruthless and will chase you down, making them tricky to avoid. Around the end, you'll leave the castle briefly to go across a bridge and make some jumps off the top. 55, Toad Harbor. Good old San Francisco. You'll find sailboats, a town, and even some trolleys cruising the road. You can drive on the walls too, which is pretty darn nifty. There's lots of relaxing vibes with Toad Harbor. 54, DS Rainbow Road. This may come off as a fairly basic rendition of Rainbow Road, but it was the first one to include a loop and corkscrew, which is pretty impressive for a handheld title. The music slaps as well, which is an added bonus. 53, Rock Rock Mountain. Mario Kart 7 really wanted to fully utilize their gliding mechanics, and that's accomplished with a section that lets you glide down a massive mountain. You'll also go through a tunnel and climb up a hill with lots of boulders rolling down. 52, 3DS Bowser's Castle. What I adore about this Bowser's Castle is the amount of routes you can take. Every twist and turn, the roads split up, which adds a lot of value to the track. And that water section comes completely out of nowhere. 51, Yoshi Valley, the king of multiple routes. Every path leads you to a new adventure. You aren't always sure what's the best route to take, and that's what makes it such an interesting track. In fact, not even the game knows what you're doing since it can't track who's in which place. 50, Toad's Factory. Factories are not really the safest places to be, so imagine driving through one. You've got presses trying to squish you down, conveyor belts with boxes, and even live construction. Sign me up. 49, DK Pass. Climbing up and down this mountain is a pretty good time. There's even some snowballs to avoid along the way. The best part of the map, though, is that hidden item box that always gives you stars or mushrooms. I don't know why that's there, but I'm not complaining. 48, Peach Gardens. All right, Peach, flexing on your wealth with a huge garden, all right. But seriously, driving through a massive garden with chain chomps as guards is a brilliant idea and works perfectly with a maze-like structure. 47, Twisted Mansion. Even Nintendo got bored with their ghost tracks and made this ridiculous looking mansion. The carpets are wavy, half of the house is flooded, and none of it makes sense due to the anti-gravity. It's kind of got Tim Burton vibes. You can especially hear this in the soundtrack. 46, Wii U Rainbow Road. At first, I was disappointed with Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road because it didn't really live up to the hype of Mario Kart 7's, but the more I play it, the more I can appreciate its Space Station theme and the fact that the track does a good job with making the level hard, but also fun. 45, Moonview Highway. Take Toad's Turnpike and dump steroids all over it. What you get out of that is Moonview Highway, a fast-paced traffic level where cars are flying around all over the place and making turns without putting up their signals. That's right, the game is setting a bad example. You youngins better not be listening to those drivers in Moonview Highway, all right? 44, Hyrule Circuit, a Legend of Zelda track. The coins are replaced with rupees, hitting the three Triforces opens up a ramp, and the Piranha Plants are now Deku Babas. Not only is Hyrule Circuit a joy to play, but it makes me excited for the future of Mario Kart and what we may see from another Nintendo IPs. 43, GameCube Rainbow Road. This was the moment when Rainbow Road tracks really started to get good. The music is breathtaking, it makes you feel like the end is near in a good way, and you're exploring space. And on the bottom of this track is Mushroom City, which is also a banger track. 42, Mushroom Gorge. Mushrooms are a staple to Mario, so using them as a main factor for a track only makes sense. These ones are especially cool since you can bounce and trick off them. There's even a cave where the mushrooms split into multiple paths. 41, Sweet Sweet Canyon. Cookies, chocolate, donuts, and all the things that are a delight. Not only does Sweet Sweet Canyon look delicious, but the track is just creamy to play. The level design has a subtle donut shortcut and a boost that launches you to a sugar high. 40, GameCube Bowser's Castle. This was the track that taught me how to drift as a kid. It does not play around with how quickly turns come up. You'll constantly have to avoid lava or fire, and there's a Bowser statue that spews fireballs at the end. 39, Thwomp Ruins. Ancient ruins are surprisingly not very common in Mario Kart. Using Thwomps as a the theme makes total sense too, since they're glorified rocks, and rocks are very old, I think. They're, they're pretty old, right? 38, DK Summit. This snow mountain takes a page from DK Pass and DK Mountain, and mashes them together into a really thrilling ride. The main obstacles are thick snow piles, as well as snowboarding shy guys that are embracing their inner Sean White. There's so many places to trick off, so you're constantly getting those adrenaline-filled speed boosts. 
37. Wario's Gold Mine. Of course Wario has a gold mine. He is Mr. Money after all. And there's very few safety precautions since we drive on train tracks the entire time, having to avoid minecarts and falling into the pits of darkness. Very dangerous. I like it. 36. Mushroom Bridge. This is a more mild version of a traffic level, and is by far the most creative too. Most cars need to be avoided, but there's also mushroom cars that release mushrooms, and the wiggler trains can topple you across the ground. You can also ride on top of the bridge, which has no added benefit, but you feel like a badass when you don't fall. 35. Mushroom City. Mushroom Bridge, but it dark. The traffic is a little bit heavier, and the mood is more intense since it's harder to see all the traffic coming. I go back and forth between Mushroom City and Mushroom Bridge being better, but I prefer the extra bit of difficulty and the extra paths. 34. DK Jungle. It starts off like DK's Jungle Parkway, but becomes its own beast once you run into the Tiki Heads and enter the Golden Temple. All these elements come from Donkey Kong Country Returns, which helps make the track stand out. 33. Dragon Driftway. This Chinese-themed course is by far one of the most exotic locations to drive in, at least for Mario Kart standards. And even better is that it's based around Gobblegut, which is a boss from Mario Galaxy 2. The attention to detail is just remarkable, and the turns are reminiscent of a dragon as well. 32. Wario Coliseum. I know monster trucks are just about squishing cars and stuff, but this Coliseum really is a monster. There's only two laps due to the sheer length, and these are some of the most dangerous roads to drive on. The dome at the end where you can risk taking a ramp for a shortcut only sweetens the pot. 31. Dino Dino Jungle. Dinosaurs in Mario tend to blend well like a chocolate milkshake, so having a track based on dinosaurs just needed to happen. You're mostly driving through prehistoric jungles, as well as a couple caves with geysers and Noshi at the bridge. Noshi or Nasi, both of those are the names of this dino. Fun fact of the day, you're welcome. 30. Wario Shipyard. Here we go again with Wario and his money. This time it's insinuated that he's a pirate. Lots of this track is underwater. You'll have to be wary of pipes blowing out water, swinging anchors, and just general driving as this track has some tricky moments. 29. Grumble Volcano. Driving through an active volcano. Because why not, right? But alas, Mario is no stranger to danger. As the laps progress, more and more of the track falls apart, which can get pretty intense. There's fireballs flying out of the sky and hotheads on the road too. 28. Dolphin Shoals. I never thought I could genuinely enjoy a water level so much. Dolphin Shoals has us driving through sand, but also hopping across water blowing pipes and tricking off a massive Yunagi. The music really makes this a treat as the jazz kicks in hard for the moments you briefly leave the water. Oh, it feels so good. Mmm, yeah. 27. Super Bell Subway. I've never been a fan of subways or taking the train, but I've always fantasized going through those tunnels and seeing what's inside. That fantasy is brought to life since you drive through these tunnels while the trains are coming through. Super Bell Subway does an awesome job with immersion, and you can even ride on top of the trains. 26. Piranha Plant Slide. The idea behind this one is a weird hybrid of a classic Mario Underground stage, lots of water, pipes, and piranha plants. What comes out of that is an extremely interesting track with rushing water, drastic changes in locations, and a massive jump at the end. 25. Airship Fortress. Mario Bros. 3 airships are so infamous that they deserve their own track and they manage to nail the feel of them. You start on the top by avoiding rocky wrenches, and then go inside with a bunch of fire bars. You're eventually launched into a partially destroyed castle to repeat the loop again. It's really well done. 24. Luigi's Mansion. What a great game. I'm so glad there's a track based around that world. You drive through parts of the mansion which is filled with booze and portrait ghosts, then you'll step outside and are forced to drive through mud and moving trees. 23. Wii U Bowser's Castle. There are so many Bowser castles at this point that I'm surprised Nintendo manages to find ways to make new ones. This track has a massive Bowser that punches the floor and shakes it. Plus there's lasers on the second and third lap that just come out of nowhere. This can be difficult with tons of things to avoid, and it's pretty spectacular with a rocking music piece too. 22. Delfino Square. The world of Delfino Plaza is beautiful, so having a track based on that is a dream come true. It doesn't really follow the game's original map, but instead creates its own. The bridge at the end is pretty neat, since you'll never know if you're going to get a high or low jump. 21. Cloud Top Cruise. Cloud levels don't come often for Mario Kart, but when they do, they always deliver. Cloud Top Cruise starts us with bouncing around a bunch of clouds, the landing on an airship, and then getting thrown into a thunderstorm. And the best part of it all is the music has parts of Gusty Garden Galaxy. 
20. Waluigi Stadium One of the best stadium tracks out there. Waluigi Stadium has tons of ramps that actually catch you a good amount of height, and that's what makes this one so fun. You truly feel like you're on a dirt bike catching some gnarly height. 19. Maple Treeway Taking the idea of a forest track, then shrinking the racers down is absolutely brilliant. We get to drive on top of tree trunks, avoid some wigglers, and basically be Tarzan for a few minutes. 18. Koopa Cape Here we have, I guess what you'd call an aisle, but it also expands into a forest and later this crazy underwater tunnel with electrical currents that can shrink you. There's also rushing water in lots of areas, which is always a great time since that improves your speed. 17. Daisy Cruiser I've been on a fair share of cruise ships in my day, but nothing quite matches this. Daisy Cruiser lets you drive around on top of a ship, through a kitchen area, and even some of the underground piping. The recreation of being on one of these ships is one to one. They absolutely nailed the feel. 16. Electrodrome As a guy that isn't a party person, I can get a kick out of this one. There's electric flashing lights all over the place, the flat screen TVs have Mario enemies bopping around, and the track's roads change color while you leave electrical dust behind. 15. Shy Guy Falls You drive up and down a waterfall. Like, do I really need to say more? Okay, sure, I will. The Shy Guys sing to the song when you get close by. You love it. You know you love this one. 14. Wee Bowser's Castle Most Bowser castles are fairly basic in design, which makes sense because castles are very old compared to most buildings, but the Wii version threw that idea out the window and went buck wild. I can't even begin to describe the level design. It just turns and loops however the hell it feels like it with no rhyme or reason. And I really like that. It's extremely refreshing and loads of fun. 13. Sunshine Airport Airports have always given me a bit of anxiety and unease, but this track takes the fun of flying in new places and directions I never thought possible. You'll careen through an airplane, fly with the planes, and even through an airport lobby. I still don't know how they managed to pull off a racetrack with an airport. It's so impressive. 12. Mute City Well, it's not F-Zero, but it's the next best thing. This track not only looks and feels like F-Zero, but driving across the pink panels nets you free coins, which is similar to gaining boost power in the original game. That small touch makes this track feel so much more impactful. 11. Wii Rainbow Road When I think of Rainbow Road, the Wii version is what really comes to mind. The entire experience is an absolute whirlwind. One minute you're bouncing off a wavy road, then you're taking some star cannon somewhere, or you're just weaving around all over the place. It's hectic, and one of the best Rainbow Roads to date. 10. Woohoo Loop Taking Woohoo Island from Wii Sports and turning it into a track makes so much sense that nobody saw it coming. As someone that played a lot of Wii Sports and Wii Fit, I love how closely they stuck with the source material and just how many places you can explore. 9. Maka Woohoo Woohoo Loop doesn't cover the entire island, but Maka Woohoo makes up for that by showing off more of it while also giving us a beautiful sunset. The ending is my favorite part since you get to glide through the sky for quite some time. 8. DK Mountain This is the first of many mountain-themed tracks, and DK Mountain really hits it out of the park. You start by blasting through a barrel, then you careen down a volcano mountain while avoiding large boulders and cracks in the road. It can be a very hectic yet fantastic time. 7. Coconut Mall Fans of Mall Cop, step aside because Coconut Mall is where it's really at. The track literally recreates a mall to a T. You're able to drive up the escalators, through the stores as a shortcut, and you even get to navigate a parking area. And like real life, the drivers don't watch where they're going when backing up. Again, Nintendo and showing bad examples of driving. 6. Music Park Music is one of the best ways to express yourself and change your current mood. That's why this track is such a joy, because you get to experience running across a piano or a xylophone and the background music plays those notes as you're driving. Everything in this track has a rhythm to it, even the head bopping piranha plants and bouncing music notes. 5. Mount Wario There's a lot of snowy mountain tracks, and then there's Mount Wario. What makes this one so special is how many different locations you travel to, whether it be through a dam, a bunch of trees, or the top of an icy mountain. This is one of the few tracks that is more of an adventure than a race. 4. Big Blue Mute City is a fantastic track, but Big Blue somehow manages to be even crazier and more enjoyable. It's a massive one lap track, and you'll drive through loads of boosts, take crazy turns, soar across running water, and the whole track is excitement that you can't find in many other games. 
3, 3DS Rainbow Road. Most Rainbow Road tracks just have a Rainbow Road, but this one takes us to planets, the moon, and even a narrow tube thingy with no boosts. The music just slaps a smile onto your face every time. This Rainbow Road has no limits to its greatness. 2. TikTok Clock The construct that holds human life itself together. TikTok Clock uses loads of clock pieces like gears and minute hands to make for one of the most engaging Mario Kart tracks out there. And the music has this strange mystical feel to it. It really stands out among the other pieces. 1. Waluigi Pinball What else were you expecting? It's Waluigi freaking pinball! No other track could possibly beat its slapping music, exclusive item sound effects, and absolutely riveting design! It truly feels like you're in a pinball machine with the balls, and it's 100% always an amazing time every single time. Woo! If you made it to the end of the video, give yourself a round of applause because that was by far the longest ranked video I've ever put together. I'm really curious what you find the best Mario Kart tracks to be, so let me know in the comments. But with that said, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time. And now I sleep. I take a sleep. <laughs>